This is where, where we left off. Okay. Well, we don't okay. want to get to that before. No, he was talking about what was his dad's rank. Oh, major, huh, Dad? Yeah. Your dad's rank was major? He was, he was a major at that time, and I was in his squadron, <coughs> Kelly Air Force Base, and we were right there, and we were going into... I was fed up with being around in, in his unit, and I was gonna. I decided to go to aviation cadet program for flight training. So I took the test for aviation cadets. I aced that test. How oh, cool! Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was just thinking. I aced it. What a shocker! And so I was selected right away to go to aviation cadet training, and this was in uh, May of uh, 1943. Yeah, May of 1940. In July, I got on a train in San Antonio, and I was going to Miami Beach, Florida for basic training not flying training, basic training for going into the Army Air Corps. The, Ar the World War II, they, the uh, Army took over Miami Beach and turned all the hotels into GI barracks. Really? I didn't know that. I was on I was on Miami Beach in the Indian Apartments. That's what they were called? Yeah, that was the Indian Apartments. It was only a, it wasn't a multi-story building. It was a small building. And we weren't in a GI type barracks on an army post. We were in a, we were in a hotel on Miami Beach that was turned into barracks. <laughs> and when was this? What year? 1943. Okay, we have to get this in there. That was uh, that's not till we get to Missoula, Montana. Okay, when was this one? <clears throat> that was in that was in Miami Beach. This was in Miami Beach. That was in Miami Beach. Uh, uh, one of my off days. This picture was taken. Uh, I was sending that to my girlfriend at the time in San Antonio. <laughs> and my buddy took my picture to send to my... Her name was... It won't pull back Norma up. Norma Jean. Just touch it. I did. It's her name oh, you're in the wrong. Her name was Norma Jean Forbes. No, that wasn't her name. Norma Jean... You do. Holden. Not, not Bert. I don't remember her last name. Okay. Norma Jean. Anyway, that Norma Jean was her, not Norma Jean, Betty Jean. Betty no, Jean. Not no. Betty Jean. Norma Jean was Marilyn Monroe. Betty Jean was where Grandma and Grandpa lived. Yeah. I've cursed him. I can't remember her name just offhand for some reason. Anyhow, that picture was taken for your girlfriend. That's for my girlfriend. But I go back who to the... In, who lived in San Antonio. The important question, did she drink beer? She was on, She was underage. She was... Oh! She was, she was 16 in uh, junior high school or something. Uh-oh. Anyway. <laughs> that still was military guy. Still didn't answer the question, though, if yeah. you noticed. <laughs> oh, no. I, that's, I, I, I was saying I got on the train in San Antonio and headed for Miami Beach. We went through that. We went, it was at the hotel of Miami Beach. And the, our, our training field that we used was the golf course on Miami Beach. Oh, my God. Because when you're going to take that, over a town, that's where I learned. That's where I learned to march on a golf I course. I knew how because I was in the ROTC in high school. 
I already knew that anyway. And it, it was just that basic training stuff of teaching you the military stuff and how to march and how to all that stuff. Did you learn golf too? No, I didn't learn any golf. <laughs> but uh, that training lasted from July of 43 through August of 43. Then I was sent from Miami Beach to Missoula, Montana to go to the college training detachment at the University of Montana to go for sort of a preschool type thing to go into aviation cadet training. Okay. Uh, that train ride from Miami Beach to Missoula, Montana was supposed to only take five days. But the train got to Chicago and we sat on the in the railroad yard for five more days. What? Oh my God. Sound like we're going to Auschwitz. Waiting for a train to pick us up to take us to Missoula. For five days you sat on that train. We sat in that and we had a mess we had a one of the railroad cars was a mess hall to eat in. And and we all were told we we got to stay on the train, and then we couldn't leave the train. Oh my God! For five days, <laughs> but we did. We went into town in Chicago. Ah, you jumped the tracks, did we you? We jumped the tracks. We and uh, we seemed. I don't remember anybody being missing when we when the train took off. <laughs> But uh, I was on the train. Did you do a head count? <laughs> I was on the train headed for Missoula, Montana. Get to Missoula, Montana, and we're in the university dormitories. Still not in any military barracks. Who's that? Um, nobody. Nobody? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the first thing I had to do in the college, University of Montana, College training detachment. We had to take a test to see what how we would fit into the courses, you know. Mm -hmm. And this was September. I aced that test also. Yet another shocker. <laughs> I aced that test. So they moved me up to the senior class. I didn't have to spend that three months there. Not a boy. Four months, I think it was. I went straight to the senior class, which I only had, had to be in Missoula, Montana for one month. Wow. Which was through October of 1943. All, the only guys in Missoula, Montana, was just the military. We were in this town of many girls, and the only ones that could be, be, have free time around the the town was the upper class, which I was. Damn, and smart boy. I went straight to the upper class. There was lower class and upper class. The dodos were the lower class. The dodos. <laughs> That's what we call them. Yeah. yeah. And our upper class, I wore the fancy bill hat like that. The dodos had to wear that uh, uh, overseas type cap, or what do you call it? It was not a bill cap like that. And I had shoulder boards on there, but that was upper class too. Mm. I could walk from class to class. The dodos had to be in formation and they had to run everywhere. <laughs> the dodos. If they were by themselves, they had to run. 
Okay. They could, if they were in a formation, they could be marched over there. We had a dance one evening in the auditorium there at the school. And all of us guys, and there was women all the way around the hall. hall. And you just go pick out the girl you want to dance with. A little buffet or, of, or of beauty, girls, huh? The girls would come ask you to dance. That's the way it was going, too. And so we were kind of top dogs around there mm -hmm. with all these girls. I don't know why I'm getting on this subject. Okay. It's okay. It's a good one. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. It's a good story. Uh, we all, we're all behind you grinning. <laughs> and I come into a girlfriend in Missoula, Montana. Uh-huh. We got pretty close. Uh-huh. And... Uh, wasn't long after that, I... I was transferred from there to Santa Ana, California for pre-flight training. Okay. But flying didn't start yet. It was coming up on Thanksgiving. It was in November when I went to uh, Santa Ana, California, November of 1943 to go to Santa Ana, California for pre-flight training. She sent me all kinds of cookies and and stuff for uh, Thanksgiving. Uh-huh. That was bad news. That was bad news? Uh, cookies? Being a, every time I went to a new place, you, be, you were a dodo to begin with. You weren't up a class level. I was a dodo then at Fort Santa Ana, California. Oh, a newbie. And all the upper class, all the upper class were getting into my cookies that came from <laughs> this girl in Missoula, Montana. And I had to do 10 push-ups for every, for every cookie I ate. Oh no! <laughs> so you, well, that does not sound fair. The love of your life was not uh, was losing her spark, huh? And again, the dodos. <laughs> when you go into the mess hall to eat, you had to be in formation to be able to walk. If I'm by myself, I gotta run all the time. That as a dodo, okay. upper class can wear the bill hat and boards on the shoulders and all that stuff. And you can, uh, what was I going to, you can walk to where you want to go. You don't have to run as an upper class. Dodos had to run. And they had a different type of uniform on. You could tell dodos from the upper class real easy. When we go into the mess hall, we all sit down at a table and they bring you, Dishes that were that thick, about a half inch thick, you know, great big dishes. Yeah. Heavy. And the, when you sat down, there was a tablecloth on the table. Really? Table, tablecloth. It was quite different from just regular mess halls. Aviation really? cadets. My pay went up to $50. Wow, no, you were rich. It went up to $50 at aviation cadet pay. Prior to that, I was $21 a month. More than doubled. <laughs> and Rolling in we the all, I'm telling you. all the dodos sit down, and there's an upper class at the head of the table. We sit down at the table with the plate upside down. This great big thick cup was on top of it uh, that you drank out of. And then they forced the knives was somewhere there, somewhere. Anyway, we couldn't turn those plates over to eat until the upper class says the entire mess hall turned the plates over. Okay. And you could not make any noise turning that plate over. 
If anybody made any noise turning the plates over or the cup over, everybody had to turn them back over again. <laughs> My God. And uh, it's okay. I forget how they said it. But <coughs> okay, at ease or something, or rest or something. And they never gave us rest. You could talk when you rest. <laughs> at ease, no, t you, at ease to eat. But you, uh, couldn't talk. Couldn't talk. Oh, and we're talking about a uh, hundred guys yeah. in the mess hall. And one of them mess up. Can I, we're turning these plates over without making a sound. Hmm. <laughs> and they, they give the people that were on KP at that time, that was Dodos, <laughs> uh, would bring the bowls of stuff to the table. The peas, the mashed potatoes, or potatoes, or whatever they had, and the meats. And somebody would say, please pass the peas. And you, we had to do, uh, we couldn't talk except to ask for food. Anybody take some while it's on the way that asked for it, he was given demerits for that. Really? And so the guy that asked for the food would get it first. Then somebody else would ask for it, it would go to him. But anybody would shortstop it, we called it, he'd get demerits for that. You didn't have a lot of Italians in the military because we're like octopus at the dinner table. And, oh, <laughs> and there was some order about that mess all day. Anyway, we had, we couldn't just eat like this. We'd put a fork in it, raise it up, and come in, come in like this. That was every meal, your three meals a day? Yes, three meals a day. Was the food good? As I recall, it was edible. They was hungry all the time. I was going to say, probably didn't matter, they were starving. Or worried about putting their fork in the wrong spot. Right. <laughs> it wasn't sauerkraut and weenies. It was better food than that. Yeah. It wasn't beans. A lot of, it was beans, but the good beans. It wasn't just pork and beans. Uh, anyway, that's the way we'd eat. Up and in. 90 and then, degrees. <laughs> when you're all through, I don't remember how we what we did with the dishes. I don't. We didn't turn them over. They were all soggy and with food. And you had to eat everything. You couldn't. Whatever you take, you could take as much as you want, but you had to eat it all. And now, what happened if you didn't? Nobody. That never happened. Oh. Never <laughs> Nobody got a chance to find out. Yeah. More the merits, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In other words, you could have all the food you want, but you had to eat had it. Had to eat it. And, and you know how that goes when you're starving. And, you're and then we'd leave the... <laughs> yeah. We'd leave the... Uh, Daily. <laughs> we'd leave the mess hall, and due to our classroom stuff and all that sort of... Thing. But back back up a little bit. Every morning at Reveille. At where? Reveille, they called it. Uh-huh. A cannon would go off, and they'd have a uh, rev. Reveille was a, a trumpet note. Was a the trumpet wake up, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the evening, it was it. taps. In the, the reveille was when they raised the flag. How'd that go again? The gun would go off, and they'd do the spark, Star Spangled Banner thing, and raise the flag. It was winter time at that rate because this is. Uh, this is uh, what is this is November. Mm hmm And I was there through January. That was winter in Santa Ana, California. It's freezing. We were in a private room in a army barracks, a private room for thirty guys. A private room for 30 guys. That doesn't sound too private. That's over and under bunks. 
know, just... Yeah. And waking up at 2.30 in the morning, that's the weirdest yeah. sounding berries. One's snoring, one's talking in your sleep. A uh, few farts here and there. A few farts and that sort of thing going on. <laughs> talking in your sleep and all this. I never was a snorer. But there was lots of guys in there. That was the noisiest barracks at 3.30 in the morning or 2.30. <laughs> yeah. And let's see, I'm leading up to something else. <coughs> we had, the bed was always aired out. Was, the mattress was rolled up. The blankets were folded. The sheets were folded. The pillow was no pillowcase on it, and the sheets and pillowcase were on. All of that was folded up in there, and a comforter. The only thing we slept in was the comforter. We didn't unfold the blanket or the sheets or any of that, because that was, that was too much time on it. I was just thinking that. Yeah. <laughs> we always just rolled out the mattress. Shortcut. And, and slept in the, in the comforter. Just rolled up in that. I don't remember what time. It's five o'clock in the morning. That's when guy comes through and says, everybody up, waking everybody up. We had 10 minutes or less than that, five, five minutes to get outside and get in formation forever. Oh my God. Oh. No kidding. We didn't have time to go to John or well, or see, all that sort see, of thing. that's where I would have a problem. Okay. <laughs> we didn't have time for that or oh, showers and none of that. We had to go out and get meat regularly. When we come back in, we do the showering and all that. So how long did that take? I mean, I guess what I'm trying to find out is how long did you have to... Cross your legs and then hope you didn't pee your pants. Until you got to go. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember that being a problem. Uh, oh, I'm sure not out of fear, but you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, a lot of the guys didn't even put their pants and shirt on. They just put this big overcoat on. This winter overcoat that came, that came down to your ankles. Uh-huh. And your boots... It came down to the boots anyway, where you didn't even have to have your pants on. <laughs> they, and you just, shortcut. <laughs> <laughs> and they always picked one of the flights out to be inspected. If you weren't chosen, you got away with it. Uh oh. But if you if you tried inspection, you had to open up your jacket and, and there you are standing there in your drawers. <laughs> And that's Jamiris. Yeah. I'm wondering if that's the birth of the flasher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's where it started. Where it came from. Everything started <laughs> in the military. <laughs> oh, oh, and man. Then, then Reveille's over and you all went in. And you uh, did your shaving and showering and the, all the S's they call it at that time. Shine, shit, shave, mm -hmm. shower. It wasn't a shower every day in that cold weather. <laughs> it was a shower in the evening before I went to bed. Where it was warm. Lights out at 9 o'clock, I think it was. Mm. Lights out at 9 o'clock. And sometimes a guy would have some kind of little light or something and under the covers and in the quilt, you know, that comforter, and it, it, and he'd get caught, and he'd get demerits for that. Did you ever get caught for doing something? That was, I forgot about that in Missoula, Montana, when I, when they came through the rooms and for inspection. Uh-huh. This was an officer that came through and inspected the room. It wasn't, cadets was with him, but an officer came through and inspected with white gloves on. Uh-oh. 
and it it checked for dust. There better not be any dust come out on that white glove. Yeah. He found a broom straw next to my bed. A broom straw. I got two demerits for that broom straw, and the way it came out on the demerit sheet out there with it in the bulletin board said lumber on the floor. Two lumber? demerits. Lumber? <laughs> lumber on the floor. Two demerits. Oh my God. <laughs> Whatever happened to the demerits? Did you have to do something to pay them off or something? Yeah, 12 demerits you could accumulate without any penalty. Okay. But over 12, for every demerit over 12, you had to spend one hour on the weekend when you're supposed to be off partying uh, on the weekend. You couldn't even go to town as a dodo. You had to be <laughs> an upper class before you could go to town. Yeah. But until then, oh, 12 demerits, 13 demerits, you had to spend one hour marching in full dress uniform with white gloves on and a rifle on your shoulder and marching the length of a block back and forth. Wearing a hole in Mother Nature's Yeah. <laughs> when you went to another town, did your demerits go with you or you started fresh? When I left, when I left, your merits followed you. Yeah. From from post to, post to post at that time, not right. base to base. Uh, 